Okay, so full disclaimer before we get started with the benching in the Smith machine with a gazillion bands. These bands, actually there are two, one and then another one here. I got a little clip here holding them together. This is taking about 40 kilos off the bottom. So right now it's basically loose. You see, you can bounce up and down just on the bands and it's got about you know, 10 kilos, 25 pounds per side and the bar is about 20 kilos. So this is now completely at rest using two bands. The bottom weight is 40 kilos, so that's actually zero for me. Now, because they're reverse banded, I get more resistance as I push the weight up. I have no idea how much it actually is at the top, but it's uh, significantly more weight. So you'll see me benching. Whatever weight I put on the bench is not exactly the weight Then I'm benching. It is what it is, guys. You can uh, in the comment fields. Welcome to Vigorous Training. I'm Coach Steve and this is chest day and abs. But I didn't film abs because nobody wants to see 200 sit-ups in a row. So the last few years I've been doing uh, flat bench presses either in the Smith machine or in the hammer strength machine. This is the first working set of three plates. Now, to be fair, it's probably only two plates at the bottom and um, a little bit close to a little bit over two and a half plates at the top. I'm still happy with six reps, so with the progressive resistance or, you know, by the reverse resistance band, you get more and more weight as you go up to the top. But of course, when you go up to the top, you know, biomechanically, you get more and more pressure on the chest as well. So it's a perfect contraction this way. And by reverse banding these exercises, you know, you take away the need for a spotter. And that's why it's very easy to push past failure and uh, just keep grinding. And at one point, you know, you'll finally lock out that rep. So what I do with this exercise is I build my way up to three plates, then I go down, I uh, do a back off set with two and a half plates, so that's this set. And I think you got about seven reps uh, with this one, so six reps with three plates, and then uh, seven reps with two and a half plates. I mean, you're already a little bit pre-fatigued, so it's pretty uh, common that you're not gonna get that many reps. But if I were to do nine reps with this weight, then I won't be able to get six reps with three plates. So we'll do it in reverse order get the most amount of reps with the maximum amount of weight and then do backup sets to get the volume in. So this was seven reps with two and a half plates and then they did I think nine or ten reps with two plates which is only one plate at the bottom so um, it's uh, significantly less than what you're seeing right here because the resistance bands are taking a decent amount of weight off. That's why you see it's relatively easy. Now this exercise, I always come to a dead stop at the bottom. I think in this last set, I could have paused a little bit longer, but I always make sure that I pause it at the bottom and then explode out on the way to the top because that gives me the best contraction for this exercise. I see here, you just keep grinding and grinding and grinding. There's not too much rest. And then, um, you know, you go all the way to failure and a little bit beyond because those resistance bands do help you a little bit. Second exercise is dumbbell flies. I always have to adjust my right rhomboid um, because it somehow it sticks out. <laughs> I don't know. Everybody's biomechanically uh, not 100% equal and symmetrical. So I always have to tuck my right rhomboid underneath my shoulders just to make sure I get an equal contraction on both of my pecs. That's why you see me uh, doing all these weird micro adjustments all the time on uh, flies and um, you know, sometimes uh, Tate Press, you know, the inward tricep extensions, which you uh, also do on an incline bench to make sure that your chest is flat. I'll record an arm video pretty, pretty soon. So this is the first set. I, I wanted to make this a working set, but halfway through I realized that that was a little bit too easy. So I still went up to five or six reps, 25 kilos, and then I uh, took the second set of 30 kilos to failure. Now chest day is always a little bit more volume for me compared to other body parts because I really try to bring it up. Um, so I do a little bit more volume, do a little bit more feel sets in between just to make sure everything is properly wound up and I get, um, you know, the best possible contraction in my working set, which is this one. Uh, psych myself up a little bit on the beginning there. So this is 30 kilos. Um, let's see how many reps I get. I can't remember. It's been a few days since I did this workout. Now, with this exercise, I always make sure that I keep my arms as wide as possible at the top and then push outwards a little bit. So I never touch the dumbbells together because that takes, you know, complete pressure off your chest and puts it on the rear delts. So imagine hugging a tree, um, you know, you can feel free to make that a hippie gesture. And then you, um, you never close your arms so that you remain constant tension on your chest and get the full activation of your chest throughout this workout. 
This is a, uh, a hex press. Now normally I would use the kettlebells for this, but they only go up to 32 kilos and I've progressed my way up to 40, 45 kilos on this exercise. So I get a close grip um, attachment that you would use for a cable rows. And I place that in between the dumbbell. Now it's a little bit tricky because it, it doesn't fit 100% and that's why I need to use my finger on the dumbbell just to make sure that it doesn't crash into my face. I was struggling a little bit with this exercise. Again, you know, you do a little bit more volume, a little bit more working sets prior. So I couldn't get past that fifth rep, unfortunately. And I wasn't really happy with the first set of 45 kilos. So I decided, you know what, let's just give it another try. I took a little bit extra longer uh, rest period because usually I only rest 45 seconds, maybe a minute in between sets. And I decided, you know what, let's, let's, let's wait twice as long, do the set again, see if we can get up to six reps, which unfortunately wasn't the case. I still got stuck at the fifth rep. Um, or was it the sixth rep? I don't know. I went to failure and that's what counts, right? And this is the exercise that you shouldn't be doing, the pec deck. But we got a new machine, so I have to give it a try. I feel a little bit better when I put a resistance band uh, around the machine and I have to use a little block at the back to make sure that I, it doesn't cave inwards and actually keeps the <laughs> back deck closed. So you can't see it, but off camera it's a little bit wider than the machine actually is just to make sure that the contraction is the best it could be. Uh, I was pretty fatigued at this point, but I did decide to uh, you know, put a little bit bigger resistance band and move the pin down one more plate just to go to failure. I got four or five reps, it wasn't that much, but it actually feels very, very good, guys. If you have this machine and you have a resistance band, give it a try. It's a great finisher movement. Just make sure you don't put your hands on the holders because it's a lot of pressure on the rotator cuff. And that's the last place you would want to get an injury in because then you can't do anything upper body anymore. This is also another great finisher. It's a unilateral cable press for chest. I do this for a lower chest, so that's why I'm sitting up a little bit more. So I went to the full stack, but by being Terribly fatigued on the sets prior, I couldn't get six reps in, unfortunately. I still went to failure, grind it as hard as I can, and that basically sums it up for chest day. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you guys so much for watching, and please subscribe and like on your way out. Have a nice day, guys.